quick video of the transom as it sits right now. Got goofy little hammer in, threaded nut, riv nut type things. A couple on the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Little tiny screws. Come on up here to the back. Oh, we got one, two, three, four, five. This is the bottom of the uh, little bracket for the transom. We have this whole thing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve screws, flathead screws, uh, and then one, two, three over here, and then the two on the top. All right, trace the transom out on some cardboard. I left a little bit extra, about an inch on each side, and then you can see I cut that big square out of the top where it actually went down before. Uh, I might even make like a little hump. Uh, depending on where the transom sits and how long our long shaft motor is. All right, so number one where it doesn't fit is the edges, which is kind of what I knew because I cut it too wide. All right, so the first issue I've got, obviously, is it's too wide uh, to fit in here. The second issue is you wouldn't be able to put the transom in all the way flat and then just slide it down because of this uh, rail that goes down the side and then the third issue is even if you do cut it to the exact size it's going to be real difficult to fit it in and then also slide it down because as you slide it down the uh, boat gets wider so i think i'm just gonna have to live with the uh, gaps on the edges and just get it as close as possible all right got the cardboard transom template as close as i can i made a couple little adjustments right here. I trimmed off a little bit just because there's going to be no way to slide the thick transom in and then down and uh, get a tight flush fit just the way that the boat gets bigger towards the bottom. So I think that is about as tight as I can get it. I notched this out right here so we could uh, clear the rail and then I did make a little note and on the tracing on the plywood, I actually brought this out about a half inch on each side. And then as far as the back is concerned, I did take this back uh, transom plate off. I think it's only like a quarter inch plywood. And then I measured uh, from the bottom of the keel, I guess you would call it, to the top. And uh, I think we need, actually I ended up measuring, let's go check. So this is the long shaft motor I'm trying to fit on the boat. It's a little big, probably a little too heavy, but we're working with what we got. Um, so the measurement from the top of the bracket right here where it rests on the transom to I believe this is the cavitation plate we're supposed to be measuring against right here. It's hard to see that. To uh, this top cavitation plate is about 19 inches. So that's why I measured from the bottom of the keel right here up and uh, got about 19 inches and then just flattened it across. So I think that's going to be as good as we can get it. So I just used some uh, clamps and clamped the cardboard to the plywood and got a little trace out. You can see right here where I added the uh, half inch um, on both sides to get a little bit tighter fitment. And then I did just use a uh, straight edge to get a straight, uh, even line uh, across the top. So I'm gonna attempt to cut this out probably with a circular saw. I'm not real good with a circular, circular saw, can't cut very straight. So we'll see how it ends up and we'll get it tested. All right, got the first uh, version cut out. It is too tight. So it's uh, too tight on both sides where the uh, boat rails are and it was too tight at the bottom. I actually cut a little quarter inch off at the bottom there. Um, so now I'm gonna probably go cut another quarter inch off of both these sides where the boat rails are, and we'll see how so that So there's the new transom on the bottom compared to the old transom on the top using the uh, 23 30 seconds uh, plywood. It was $84 a sheet. Four by eight, but stacked up, it is uh, right even just even with the uh, old transom. So I think we're the perfect thickness. All right, we got a tight fit with the transom as tight as possible with uh, having to slide it down into the channel with the boat getting wider as you go lower. 
Um, I did have to massage some spots with the uh, belt sander. Uh, did go around the whole edge with the belt sander just to make it as smooth as possible. I had these four little short wood screws in here just to uh, hold everything together when I was uh, test fitting it. I think I will actually end up uh, using these in the final form. I might even put uh, four more. I actually marked out all the existing holes in the transom that the bolts go through so that I could make sure that these uh, little wood screws didn't interfere with those. I did one pass with uh, 80 grit on the DA sander. I'm gonna do uh, get a fresh uh, 80 grit pad and uh, do it one more time. All right, I was gonna epoxy the insides before I glued them together, but I talked to my friend who's done a lot of woodworking and he said it'd probably be better to use just wood glue on the two wood surfaces and glue those together and then just resin the whole outside. Um, this tight bond three should give a better hold uh, between the two pieces of wood. Um, just bare wood as opposed to being epoxied and using something else. The uh, epoxy might delaminate from the wood. So I'm gonna slather them both up and uh, clamp them together. I was trying to find a straight piece that I could line up the bottom edge just to make sure it was all even, but I think I can just do it by hand or by feel. All right, got it all glued together, uh, clamped together. I got eight of these little short wood screws in here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, just trying to get some good clamping force in the middle. I'm pretty sure I got the edges all decent. Um, we did have some pretty good uh, coverage with the glue because it's all seeping out. Uh, wiped it down a couple times. So we'll let this dry probably four to six hours before we unclamp it, see how it looks. I'm not sure if you can see, but I use about half of this 16 ounce uh, bottle of the Type Bond 3, and I had a fair amount of excess come out. So probably about eight ounces should be more than enough. I just had these one and a quarter inch exterior wood screws in here, um, and they were protruding just a little bit. I thought maybe I could sand them down. Uh, determined it would probably be better just go with some actual stainless steel wood screws. So I went to Home Depot, tried to get some stainless steel wood screws. I think I should have used a uh, number 10 by one and a quarter. Of course, I only had a few of those. So I went with a number 12, uh, one and a quarter and a number 10, one inch. I tried to put the 12, uh, the number 12 screws in um, and ended up stripping out the board. Tried to uh, countersink the head a little bit with a bigger drill bit uh, right here and ended up drilling way too far down. So I ended up mixing up some wood glue and uh, some sawdust and just pounded it in there. Um, that being said, I was getting ready to uh, start sanding and doing some epoxy. When I realized you can see through a bunch of places. See how you can see all the way through. So I'm guessing this is what they mean when they uh, say that the uh, marine grade plywood has less voids. I was thinking it was more like uh, just knots or something that were uh, cut out in the uh, layers or whatever, but you can see like in between the the plies, there's a bunch of places where there's like a three quarter inch gap. So I think I'm gonna try and do the same thing, mix up some wood glue and sawdust, uh, pack it in there, and then we'll just sand it down and it'll be a little bit less voidy for the uh, epoxy. All right, so I missed doing the uh, epoxy on the actual transom, but uh, I just used the Bondo fiberglass resin. I put two coats on each side of the transom, and each time I did a coat, I coated the edges, so I think the edges actually got four coats. Um, and then in between doing the coats, I did sand with uh, 80 grit DA sander. Uh, just used a little cup and a cheap brush to mix it up and spread it out. And I did actually get the transom installed. Uh, I ended up getting some new bolts uh, from Bolt Depot. I was trying to go to Home Depot and um, Ace Hardware. They just don't, they have a good selection, but they don't have everything in stock uh, in the amount that I needed. So I just ordered online from uh, boltdepot.com. Um, and then on each of the bolts, I just used this uh, Loctite Marine Fast Cure, and it seems to be holding up pretty well. It's done a pretty good job of sealing up all the holes, even on the bottom. Haven't had any uh, leaks through the transom or anything. So I did uh, forego putting this back piece back on um, originally. Uh, that's why I made one and it's in my uh, garage there that I will be putting on. But with this heavy motor and the jack plate and everything and all the torque from the motor, the transom does flex a little bit on the bottom, like in this area right here. So I think that actual plate will help spread out the uh, force across the transom. 
but the transom is installed. I got, uh, like I said, I got all new bolts. I have taken this out on the water a couple times and so far it's done pretty good with the uh, 35 horsepower motor. Um, like I said, there's just a little bit of flex in the bottom aluminum and I think uh, most boats have some type of transom support that goes from the transom to the floor and I only have this one little channel that goes across the back. So I think uh, that's what that little back plate is that I still need to put on back there. Um, maybe in the future, I might even um, attach like some side braces here to the side of the boat uh, just to give a little bit more support. Um, but like I said, it's been on the water a couple times and it's done pretty good. It's gotten up to about 27 miles an hour. Uh, I don't think that's the uh, actual top speed. I got this uh, little jack plate off uh, Amazon and I don't believe the motor is set up correctly. It's either too high or the trim isn't adjusted properly. So it really needs a little bit more testing on the water. When I do put that uh, back transom plate back on, I am gonna lower the entire jack plate by about an uh, inch or two. Um, this is at the lowest setting on the jack plate and it looks like uh, the motor is just about too high um, for what it needs to be. So if I lower the jack plate down maybe two inches, I'll have a lot more adjustment to uh, play with the settings and trim and tilt and all that.